Good evening. This is Howard K. Smith. I'm here at Master Control for the three television networks of the United States. Approximately... <laughs> Mr. Carver, <laughs> last about 18 minutes. This is right. Uh, now, what is on the monitors now? It looks like two arrows pointing at one another. Yes, this is a uh, test card that the uh, British... I can now see Big Ben on our monitors, so go, Europe, go. We'll go ahead with our program. Hello, America. Are you receiving our pictures from Europe, please? We, we now, now have, have Big, Big ben, ben on our monitors, monitors here, here, Mr. Dimbleby. So, so go, go, Europe, go. go. Hello, North America. July the 23rd, 1962. Fine. Foreground, a London heat train talks to untold American visitors in London. Big Ben in the background, a policewoman in her familiar uniform at his side. We go instantaneously to the Champs Elysees in Paris. The Arc de Triomphe in the background studies a huge tricolor of France hanging underneath it in honor of this occasion. There, our mobile camera is moving up the Champs Elysees with an escort of Republican security guards to clear the way. You'll hear that emergency horn sounding. We switch again 800 miles away to Rome, down to Rome, the eternal city. And there, splendid in its floodlighting, is the massive, everlasting Colosseum built by the Emperor Nero. My name is Richard Dimbleby. I'm talking to you at this moment 600 miles away from Rome in the Eurovision control room in Brussels, Belgium. Now, in the next 18 minutes, 54 of our cameras in Europe are going to bring you live pictures. May I say now, no tape, no recording. Everything you see is as it's happening here. Live pictures from all over the European continent. Welcome to North Sverige. Welcome to Gelivare in northern Sweden. We have quite a few mosquitoes up here, 1,000 miles away from Brussels and 40 miles north of the Arctic Circle. We are standing here now in latitude level with the north of Alaska. The time here almost two minutes past 11, but it's still daylight because of the midnight sun. This is the land of the lats and the reindeer. The reindeer behind me, being roped by the lat farmers, is not only symbols of Santa Claus. They are this is the beach of uh, Mazzaro, the Mediterranean, the beach of Taormina. This is the most southernmost point in our Eurovision network. It is a very hot and dry evening. I saw the signs of ice for fellow commentators in Sweden was having trouble with the mosquitoes. Well, there is no such trouble here for me or for these fishermen. You can see it work close to the sh shore. The lights you see, incidentally, are the lights they use to attract the fish in these waters from these Sicilian fishermen and from myself. I send greetings to the millions of people in North America and in Europe from uh, only from Europe, from Sicily. Guten Abend aus Österreich. I am standing 500 miles from Sicily in Vienna. Behind me, the Spanish riding school the home of the best trained horses in the world. This elegant display is now performed to the music of Frederick Chopin, especially for you and this television program. The equestrian ballet of the Spanish Riding School exists for more than 200 years. It's a far cry from Sicily, and more often than not, a far. You've now jumped a thousand miles from Vienna to the Lizard, Cornwall, England. It's a far cry from Sicily, and more often than not, a far wilder sea here in this southwest tip of England. But tonight you've joined us on a calm summer night, almost four minutes past 11, temperature of 58. A little cooler, nevertheless, I imagine, than that Sicilian bay. But this is the Atlantic, a small part of which I've crossed on this little rowboat tonight to get to this rock. The same Atlantic that has, of course, been joining us since long before Telstar, sweeping out further west, past my own native Ireland and washing the shores of America, from where you watch us now. And to where, more than 300 years ago, the Pilgrim Fathers set sail past this very spot. 
Inside that boathouse here, the lizard Cadwith lifeboat, ready to swoop from a station that's already plucked from this ocean a thousand lives. Many of them are your part of the Atlantic, and here she comes, watchdog for all those who go down to the sea and ship. Here in Belgrade, 600 miles away from where I speak to you myself at the moment, and 7,000 miles from you in San Francisco and High Hope, you can see this crowd of people. We're looking at the Square of the Republic in the capital. On the square is the National Museum with all its treasures of Byzantine and Yugoslav art. And you're looking now in the corner at what's called the Miroslav Bible, the oldest known Serbian manuscript written by the monk Gregorie 900 years ago. And hard by the Bible, on its stand, on the walls, there are frescoes, 800 years old. They're faded now. They were brought here from the monasteries where they were painted by the monks and other unknown artists in 1237, perhaps the finest remaining medieval art. We pass by the two sweat guards in ceremonial uniform. Inside, the Sistine choir at this very moment is singing for you. And we see here, as we hear them, the glories of Michelangelo's last judgment. This one of the world's treasures, the peace of man's artistic achievement. Christ in all his glory as the just, and around him the sinner and the sinner. The world's greatest museum. It was once the palace of the kings of France. It's the Louvre. There's a night watchman. He's climbing the 60 stone steps through the vaulted gallery. There, at the top of the steps, there stands one of the world's most famous statues, a memorial to a naval victory at Salamis 2,300 years ago, the winged victory of Samothrace. Greek culture and Roman culture, these are the foundations of French civilization. Small fragments, perhaps, of what? Bruce Mitterrand. Here and now, in the heart of Europe, near Geneva in Switzerland, we're with the night shift at the European Center for Nuclear Research. This is the ring tunnel of the world's second biggest atom smasher in action now. Behind me is a cloud chamber. And right next to it, the control room, where scientists from 13 European countries work together. On tonight's shift are engineers and physicists from Britain, the United States, Switzerland, Germany, Poland, and France. Eastbrook, Rheinhausen. With the night shift just setting last furnace number six of the Rheinhausen battery. And we are in the heart of Germany's biggest industrial concentration, the Ruhr district, in the banks of the River Rhine. Just one hour ago, these night shift men left their home. Already now they are dripping wet sweating under their protective asbestos coat. These steel men have got used to the deafening... Welcome to you. The lights of this night traffic lead us to the old room of the bath of Caracalla. Thousands come here to enjoy opera under the stars, surrounded by this unique setting. But let's now listen to Puccini's Tosca, sung by Ferruccio Tagliarini. miles northwest, this is Paris once again with the Champs-Élysées, one of the most beautiful streets in the world. It is the finest of the 12 avenues which lead to the Arc de Triomphe. It combines something of Broadway, I think, with something of Pennsylvania Avenue in Washington, D.C. Fashionable crowds will come out of the theaters in half an hour, as the time here is 15 minutes past 11 p.m. And now we're going up the Champs-Élysées, as so many heads of state have done, in particular, President Kennedy, when he received his first welcome in France 
here in Paris and off it was. Now, as I speak to you, there are still many people in the street, with many American tourists among them, I guess, because they like the spot, and traffic is still heavy, because here work never stops. The room is linked by radio teleprinters to every big city. In a second, you'll be able to read the names of these cities, I believe. So let us see, in a second, what New York thinks of this very program. Well received, it says. Thank you very much, New York. And now something special. Tomorrow's morning papers before French readers see them. They came out of the presses five minutes ago. Headlines, a railway accident in France, America's direct self-star program to Europe today, and Algerian problems also. Well, they're working hard from our central control room here in Brussels. No. Now, watching that little screen over my head we have, I can see a place I recognize on the south coast of England, cows in the Isle of Wight. Let us go now from Brussels to cows. And here we are, back in England, and the hovercraft. Here on Southampton Water at Cowes, they roar of a symbol of Britain 1962, making at this moment one of its first night trials. Half plane, half boat, the hovercraft skimming across the surface at up to 85 miles an hour on just a cushion of air. Already a British hovercraft is operating the world's first regular passenger service. But now at 11.17 from the English Channel back to the River Thames. Behind me, Tower Bridge and the Sleeping Port. And by me here, the ancient Tower of London, where now we witness the ritual...